<laughs> you remember the one right here, but good, 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 good. <laughs> Your lens on. The cap is on. <laughs> good. Good afternoon, members of the press present, and thank you for coming to this press conference on such a short notice. As you may see, we have eight members of parliament here present this afternoon representing the UP faction, the Democratic Party faction, and independent member of parliament, Mr. Romain Laville. This press conference was called by the ruling factions who now form a majority in Parliament to further elucidate to the press and make known to the press the reasoning why the eight members of Parliament has decided to withdraw their support from the present uh, coalition government. Um, during the press conference, information will be given and I now turn this floor, after the opening remarks, I now turn the floor over to the first Member of Parliament to speak, which would be Member of Parliament, Mr. Petrus Leroy de Weaver. Thank you and uh, good afternoon. Uh, I believe the fellow parliamentarian uh, has properly addressed uh, at least us for the issues pressing us this afternoon. I am going to be very brief because I know that uh, the other parliamentarians and also uh, my faction leader will take up where I left off, but this afternoon, it, this is quite to the opposite of what people and the public may think. This is not a happy day for St. Martin. This is not a happy occasion to sort of midstream change government. This has come about, obviously, because I believe there is absolute knowledge of what took place during the budget meeting. When a confidence, a motion of no confidence or a crisis of confidence is in place, it means that one or more ministers do not enjoy majority support of parliament. We do live in a parliamentary democracy. We are guided by rules of law and those members that have been appointed by the majority of parliament must stand by the rules of our parliamentary procedures. We will get more specific in terms of the articles that they should subject themselves to. And as we look to the momodi von Tulichting of all of the articles that we would refer to, it has become very clear that obviously that the governing uh, members of the Minister Council does not enjoy a majority in the Parliament as it now sits. This has not happened, as I said, over a one or two days period. And at the same time, I want to say personally that I have had an excellent working relationship with several of the ministers. And I will point out more very specifically the Vice, Vice uh, Premier, which is Mr. William Allen. But at the same time, I look and we are here today as a result of, I believe, mismanagement, not only of the political support that they have enjoyed in Parliament, because I think when you are in a coalition, there should be information and not disinformation. 
There should be a situation where there's trust, that there is alignment of thought, and there should be an absolute confidence that when a minister takes a decision, it has the full blessing of those that support him in Parliament. The last thing I wanted in a budget debate was to differ with my ministers on a number of issues. One, we can start about the new taxes that were being imposed on the people without absolutely any regard for recommendations that were made and tabled by their coalition partners, the Democratic Party. Many questions were asked concerning issues at the harbor. We were giving half information, clearly breaching the trust of your coalition partner. The independent member that have joined forces with the new government, he has his own reasons, he has his own uh, doctrine, he has his own beliefs, and therefore I think he will make it very clear that in the future, going forward, that there is really no room for joining forces in terms of independent members sharing a one single ministry. It simply does not work. We have, after the first or second or third month in office, every single minister goes in a separate direction because they feel that they are their own boss. We have Article 33 of the Constitution and the Rules of Order that clearly states, uh, 39.2 of the Constitution of the Netherlands and three states that the governor can proceed to dismiss a minister if it appears that the latter no longer enjoys the confidence of Parliament. Article 33.2 very specifically imposes a legal obligation on individual ministers to resign if the majority in Parliament no longer has confidence in them. Print eight, very clear, very specific. We cannot find ourselves upholding the law in a parliamentary democracy as ours where one day we want to apply and interpret rules that will subsequently differ or in, be interpreted differ, differently because we have legal minds that are in the ministry. We have to do the honorable thing the moment that this expression of no confidence has been signaled. We must maintain proper good governance and respect for the constitution of our country and more so the rules of order of this esteemed body that we call the Parliament of St. Martin. If we trample on this, I believe that we will send a very wrong and strong message to the outer world. As I said earlier in my opening, this is not a happy occasion for me personally. I am very close, very tight family uh, with many members of the outgoing ministry. And I would want to find myself having the same type of professional and family relations that I now enjoy as we go forward. However, the dynamics of politics sometimes have to be played out. And playing out the dynamics of politics means to say that you have to take a decision sometimes in the best interest of the country. At the end of the day, at the end of my term, I would have to look back and see what I have accomplished. And it would not sit well with me knowing that I have been part of the destruction of St. Martin. And therefore, during the last three or four or five days, it has come to my attention, it has come to the party's attention, that many, many things that are now taking place in many ministries can simply not have our support. We have tried to be very diplomatic. We have tried to be very cordial in our meetings in the budget and have never let us sustain the budget so that we have a budget. There might be some dilemma that will be presented to the outgoing government as well as the one that's coming in because we still don't have a budget because it has not been signed into law by the governor. So as we go forward, I would only like to, to, to stress the importance that this is simply a situation that has been brought on by non-cohesiveness, non-cooperation, non, how should I say, simply not following the direction that Parliament has established and set for those ministers that we support in government, family. It is sometimes very difficult, and today is not a very easy day because we have to change the guard. We have to, in a formal setting, 
now if we do not get the resignations of the ministries, of the ministers that have been itemized in the letters that were signed yesterday, it means we have to go over to a vote of non-confidence, and that is historically not gone on in St. Martin. And I would beg that it not be the first time. I would request, I am pleading, I am asking that the rule of law, the rules guiding our parliamentary procedures be respected, which is very clearly, it should not be misinterpreted, and do the honorable thing. I thank you. Thank you. And again, ladies and gentlemen of the press, good afternoon. On behalf of the United People's Party faction, I too hear it express my support to the new to be instated government as we simultaneously express our non-confidence in those ministers who have been mentioned in our letter um, by the um, now support, majority support in parliament and also who are and will be mentioned by um, the independent member, Mr. Romain Laville, and the DP faction and the UP faction. I too, as the members of the media, but also the people of St. Martin could remember, have expressed my concerns, and members of the UP faction have expressed our concerns publicly on several occasions, but definitely during the last budget meeting in regards to the direction or lack thereof, no cohesion in policy, the damaging attitudes, just to name a few um, reasons of some of the present ministers as they went about governing the business of the people. So from our perspective, it was never a, um, it, it was not a, a um, issue that people were not aware of as expressed by myself and as expressed by members of the UP faction. The people of St. Martin, its residents, as well as those who come to our island to invest for rest or recreation, need to have a clear sense of direction from any government. The system of checks and balances established under the principles of our constitutional democracy must be able and allowed to function. In my view, this is what is taking place again. Nothing more, nothing less. The sooner the new ministers start with their cohesive mandate, the sooner we, government as well as parliament, will be able to put this country back on track. We should be able to focus without distraction on issues that would improve the quality of life of our citizens, but also equally important the new government's aim must restore confidence in our government entities locally, within the kingdom, and internationally. Trust must be reestablished in our system of government's checks and balances. I hasten to say that our parliamentary system, as we all know, is not perfect. Each action, each decision leaves an imprint or footprint, so to speak, as we move forward in shaping our country and the future of the people of St. Martin. What took place a year ago, the changes in government and in parliament, while many were not happy, including myself, took place within the confines of our constitution. That is a political reality and that must be respected. The process is clearly explained in our constitution wherein it states, for example, that decision-making in, in a democratic legal state is taken by a majority, while there is protection and respect for the minority. That is the political reality. In terms of respect for the minority, I could even uh, state that we um, yeah, have not really seen this in the past year, but that's a different story for another time. But Parliament which has a new majority in which it can express its support or non-confidence for the Council of Ministers or for individual ministers, has not only the responsibility but also the authority 
the authority, as stated in the Constitution, to use a system of checks and balances to the best advantage and where they set the outline, the framework, along with the government for the policy and administration for our country. And that is the political reality that we want back. With this constitutional basis supported by political reality, this change is an opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to have all the noses of the ministers pointed in the same direction or for them to sing from the same sheet, taking again into consideration their ministerial responsibilities, as outlined by my um, fellow MP member, Roy De Weaver. In so doing, present a clear direction for every citizen and every vis visitor to understand. We are looking forward to more unity, more joint consultation with the ministries. The actions today, for us sitting at this table today, will be duly recorded. Same as those actions taken a year ago have been duly recorded. Tomorrow and each day after that, as well for any future member of government or member of parliament, will be duly recorded. And history will be our judges. For now, we have work to do. Let's move on. Thank you. Good evening. Um, thank you very much. I know that there has been a lot of discussions in the press lately. There's been a lot of discussions on the radios. There's been a lot of discussions in the newspapers, um, in the homes of families, um, on the side roads, or wherever discussions can take place as to <coughs> Why did uh, myself um, decide to withdraw my, withdraw my support from the government? I want to make a couple myths. Um, I want to get a couple myths out of the way. First and foremost, my decision that I took has nothing to do or is not influenced or has there ever been any monetary gain. Because one of the things that I have realized that when certain persons in, 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 in office make certain decisions, that they feel that it's in the best interest of the people of St. Martin, they always have to be something tied towards it. From the first time that I have entered into this arena in 2010, I have always been consistent to my message and what I would want and my vision for this country, St. Martin. I have always steadfast in my principles, steadfast in my beliefs, in where I think this country can or how it can become. And so I am regretful that um, it has come to this, that we are now facing a situation where uh, we are calling on a new uh, structure of government. And so I want the people of St. Martin to be very clear when I am finished speaking so we all understand. And I think this is an opportunity and a time for everyone to be able to take stock of what kind of country we really want for ourselves. Because many times we say that we want change, we come and we knock at the doors of our government officials that we need certain things to be done in order to improve the lives of our people, but very too few of us are willing to take the sacrifice, are willing to take the brunt, and willing to take that overall decision of fingers being pointing towards you in order to be able to enact change. And so sometimes I question myself as a member of parliament, um, what do we really want as a people? At the end of the day, 
My consistency within Parliament has never changed. My fight even within my party as the up party as faction leader for the needs of the people against certain beliefs of my party philosophy has never changed. I have been consistent even with the transitioning of the new government that is there today of making sure that our people are being taken care of, making sure that we put policies in place for our young people, making sure that our elderly know that we can take another look at our elderly and really, instead of talking, put things to action. It has never changed. And so when I sit in a seat and I realize that what's really the difference between whence, where I was and where I am now? That is really the, over, the overwhelming factor. And so as much as we may um, criticize and as much as we may, um, everybody may be in a frenzy now, I have made the decision to be an individual that have sacrificed everything that I could sacrifice to make sure that at the end of the day, I do what is best by the people. <coughs> Many times, we only um, we vote persons into office, representatives, but we are afraid to call them to order when they are not doing certain things that they should be doing for our benefit. Whether it's a leader of your political party, whether it's a member of your political party that you have supported, we are afraid to call them to order. And so I believe this is a time for St. Martin that we now understand and ask ourselves what it is do we want for this country. If you close your eyes and you say, if something should happen to me tomorrow, what is the future of my child? What is the future of my kids? Do I work eight hours, 12 hours a week in an economy, in a system where I can't find ways to make ends meet? I am at a point, at a crossroad in my life that I am tired. I'm tired of punging on ministers' doors, not for me, but to address the needs of the people. I am tired mentally, I am tired physically, I am tired walking from parliament over to the government building to have ministers understand the priorities of the people. And so many may not understand the decisions that I make, but that's okay. Because in time, when it's all said and done, then we will say, you know what, maybe it wasn't that bad after all. I have made sacrifices from the first time that I came into office of relinquishing my profession at 31 years old to be able to enter into this arena at full time. I have sacrificed every issue that has plagued the people of St. Martin. When we had the issue of the Pelican workers, I stood up and stand by their side in the midst of disagreements within my own party. I did that. I went and made sure that there's a law that we can have put in place to make sure that a situation like this never ever happens again to the people of St. Martin. I have worked tirelessly when there was issues where burglaries were happening on this country to establish a law upon shop legislation that we can make sure that we can deal with some of these issues that we are plaguing. I have also started and put in place and brought forward an employee-employer pension plan for our people because nobody can decide how much to give the elderly, what to do with a pension number, how, if to give this one a thousand, to give that one another number. And so I have with my staff and my, within my three um, uh, office members have worked diligently to make sure that our people now can enjoy an employee-employer pension plan just like what Aruba does during the course of my time. I have also championed for free education in St. Martin. When you travel around the different Caribbean islands and you see countries that do not enjoy the economy that we have, that we are 50 to 100 times more than their money that is turned over, 
but yet their social programs is more than what we can even dream of in St. Martin. And a fight to be able to get that established for our people, for our single mothers, for our parents who can't afford to send two or three or four of their children to school, don't know where they're going to come to get the money from, an added um, issue of, the, of their cost of living that they have to face. And so the list goes on and on and on and on. A breakfast program for our young kids that go to school every morning hungry. A parents who can't afford. Because unlike the rest, unlike us, they don't enjoy that economic stability. Many of us in St. Martin. <coughs> I also champion, especially with our young people in the different communities, that when we drive around in our districts, we can see our young guys who are sitting on the side of the roads that they now can take an opportunity to take care of their neighborhoods. Young men that are coming out of Point Blanche that don't have an opportunity to get any jobs because people don't want to hire them because they have a prison record. I have tried constantly and have always been constant where the needs of the people in this country is concerned. And so my message is clear. I am tired of knocking on ministers' desks to be able to get certain things done for to the people of this country. And it comes with sacrifice. It comes with me saying, what is more important? Is it more important that we can feel comfortable that a certain party is out of government or a certain family member or commissioner or minister is out of government and yet we don't take care of the needs of the people. So what difference was the change? Are we satisfied? Are our bills being paid? Is our GB prices going to go down? Is our food going to be provided on the table of our families? Uh, is our economy going to be in a manner in which our young people can now start to create jobs for themselves and get tax benefits in becoming entrepreneurs that we can look and say, you know what, those are young Samaritans that now establish their business in Samaritan. And we are happy that certain people are out of government, but we are not reaping the benefit and we are not trying to make sure that the overall needs are taken care of. And so a sacrifice has to come. And so I myself have taken the ultimate sacrifice of my comfort seat in Parliament to say that enough of the talking. I don't want my four years to be just that Romaine was a good talker, that I was a mouth champion, that I gave people goosebumps, that I said the things that people wanted to hear and not be able to produce for the people of this country. And many of them, sad to say, may not even know what is in the best interest for themselves. <coughs> because if we did, we would have elected different sets of people, young people, older ones, those who have an interest at heart to be able to make sure that their lives are being taken care of. But we always go for what we can get and the fix that we can get. And when all is said and done, we complain about the government, but we didn't put ourselves here. <coughs> That is the reality that we got to face. And so, I am taking the sacrifice of saying that I am willing to give up my seat in Parliament to become a minister, to be able to stop talking, and now have the ability to be able to perform. And I know what the liabilities come with becoming a minister. I know tomorrow that any member that is sitting here and other members can put a vote on no confidence against me, and I am out of a job. But in order for us to move forward as a country, people must sacrifice. We must sacrifice for what we want to be able to achieve in life. And if it costs me at the end of the day to lose my job or government fall or whatever issue, at least I can say to the people of St. Martin right. that I have fought a good fight I have finished my course, I have kept my faith, and I have done what is I felt that's in the best interest for every single one. We may not understand what is taking place now, but when the dust is cleared, we will understand. One of the other things that you also hear that is going on, that there is a climate of conversations and talks of what went down in Curaçao that may be able to happen in Simatin. 
with the death of a member of parliament. And so when you sit down and you hear people talk these type of conversations of assassination on radio programs, behind closed doors, of how they feel, I am saying to the people of St. Martin that I am willing to sacrifice no matter what <coughs> the situation may be to make sure that I can be one of those persons who have the desire to bring around change in St. Martin. And if that means that during the course of this time that I have to pay the ultimate sacrifice to serve the people of St. Martin, I am willing to do it. Because this is not about me. It has never been about Romain Laville. It has never been about me wanting to be popular. It's never been about me wanting to be known. It has been about we have an opportunity of four years to do what is right by the people. And I am willing to take that sacrifice. And so those persons who feel that, um, bec that when the time is right, I am quickly reminded of my um, West Indian background, where I came. I have always loved the people of this great country. This is a country in where that I was conceived, but not born in. This is a country of where that I have gone through and had the ability to pass through every educational system. And this is a country that I am willing to sacrifice and to lay down my life to make sure that at the end of the day, the people of this country can benefit. And so I know that there may be questions um, that the press would have to ask. And I'm willing to ask those questions. I just wanted to make it clear how I feel, how my situation is, and the decision that I took, and the reasoning behind it, and what I am willing to give up to make sure, not for me, but for each and every one of our children, for my nieces and my nephews, for your kids, your daughters and your sons, <coughs> can be able to say, you know what, at the end of the day, we had somebody that really cared and took the ultimate, whatever decision he made and sacrificed to make sure that we can build a better and a brighter St. Martin. I thank you. Good afternoon and first of all thank you all. I would simply like to say that uh, we are well aware that we live in a democracy and what we have in the Dutch Kingdom and in St. Martin is a parliamentary democracy. This is based on a majority in Parliament to approve or disapprove of any matter of course based on our Constitution. In this specific case eight of the 15 sitting members of parliament has expressed their intentions to support a new government and there is sufficient common grounds to work for the benefit of our citizens. I refer to, I refer all of you to article 44 of the constitution which states that the parliament represents the entire population of St. Martin as well as article 46 which states that the duration of the parliamentary term is four years. There have been divergent and fragmented views and definitely a lack of cohesion on several issues that has led to the fall of the National Alliance, Democratic Party, and Independent Three government. And this, no doubt, has put St. Martin in an awkward position and with our country at stake, the UP agreed to work once again with the Democratic Party and the Independent Member of Parliament, Laville, for our country. It is no secret that had this country 
continued along the lines of where it was headed and an example of the persistence by the Justice Minister with the Justice Park and its astronomical cost, we were faced with an eminent possibility and potential instruction from the Dutch with all its consequences. Possibly a non-balanced budget, thus creating a financial dilemma and no execution possibility of capital projects, etc. Not to mention the financial consequences of some of the uh, motions presented in our last budget, or most recent budget debate. What we are here today to clarify, though, is the fact that we have a new political reality. There is, and there has been a shake-up, and thus there will be a reshuffling and appointment of new ministers. My preference today is to look forward and not backward and to the next 17 or so months before the end of this term for our new government supported by the majority in parliament to ease the burden as we have heard our colleague mention of the people, create jobs and begin work on an improved and comprehensive education platform. It is no secret that our citizens does not have it easy. We will seek to not only present our working accord in the shortest possible time frame, but must realize some tangible things for our people in the short to midterm. And certainly we would like to thank you for coming. Whatever questions uh, you may have, we will address the respective questions. Um, let me just close off by saying that in 2010 when we became a country, now leading up to 2010 actually, a lot of work went in to St. Martin becoming a country. I was um, up front with Mrs. Westcott um, from 2000 championing the constitutional change. And I must say I am disappointed in the last term of the Council of Ministers in their actions. Um, it is no secret that I was one of them that loudly protested the Justice Park. And I had my reasons why I did that. Because the Justice Park is an instruction waiting to happen from the Netherlands for St. Martin. And we have no need to blindly walk in a wall when we see the wall in front of us. Um, I protested the Justice Park and a couple of days after I protested it, reality came through and the Dutch government threatened an instruction and the, the instruction is still hanging, possible instruction is still, still hanging above our heads. Um, but the consequences of an instruction cannot be only, may not only be towards the Justice Park, Consequences of an instruction may also be towards the budget, towards the way we do expenditures, towards the hiring of personnel, um, towards every action that government may have to take. And it's unnecessary for us to... We have kingdom partners, and I think with our kingdom partners, we must show that level of respect towards our kingdom partners, and we must look for cohesion and cooperation with our kingdom partners. St. Martin is just a small island. Um, whether the Dutch government right now presently give any financial support, yes or no. But in times of calamity, um, we will have to turn to our kingdom partners for assistance. Um, we only have a budget of 430 million guilders, and God forbid St. Martin being struck by a hurricane and we having to turn towards our Dutch partners for assistance and because of our actions and behavior we have severed, messed up all the relationship with our Dutch partners. So the last government lacked a lot of cohesion. Cohesion in terms of where this country was heading and it is missing while we are not an executive council any longer where the Executive Council would sit down and discuss and they have a collective responsibility. I believe that in the Council of Ministers, while each minister has his ministerial responsibility, 
ministers must also have some kind of cohesion, some kind of planning on where this country is going. It cannot be so that during a budget debate, as a Democratic Party, we are confronted with 16 motions which have dire financial consequences for the country, and one would expect us to just sit back and accept those 16 motions and vote for those 16 motions. Um, the Democratic Party is not chop liver, and um, it became unacceptable for us to continue to work under these circumstances. I think my colleague Leroy was very clear. We live in a parliamentary democracy. In a parliamentary democracy majority rule, it is very clear what the Constitution says when the Council of Ministers or a minister no longer enjoy the support of a majority of parliament, then the minister must resign. There's no ifs and buts about it. And it cannot be so that the Council of Ministers would want to take a decision to terminate the term of parliament, dissolve parliament, because then you're taking the, the horse and spanning it in behind the cart. Parliament is the one that has the decision-making authority. The Prime Minister would be the one to dissolve Parliament, but that dissolving of Parliament only takes place when one notices that the Parliament itself cannot form a majority to sustain a government. But in this case, eight members of Parliament have formed the majority to sustain the government. So there's no need to dissolve Parliament. So there's no ifs and buts about it. The Council of Ministers, a number of ministers, the eight members of Parliament has expressed that they no longer have support in five ministers. Those ministers have no choice based on our constitution but to tender their resignation and let government proceed. But there is no need to dissolve Parliament, and Parliament will not be dissolved because it is the same thing what happened last year when you had a change of government, as Mrs. Westcott say, stated. She was also under pressure to dissolve Parliament back then. It was not done because there was no need to dissolve Parliament because at the moment that the confidence, the, the Council of Ministers lost their confidence, there was another majority in Parliament supporting a new government. I thank you. And we are now open for questions. And oh. Andy Carmen, you spoke about the budget and a profitable instruction. We still don't have a budget. Have this new majority considered um, the extra salaries that will have to be added to the budget when the other uh, the, uh, the council of ministers leave? Because when the first council of ministers left, uh, the country and Martin still had to pay the up minister and the minister that, that had been signed. Now the same thing might apply and this will apply in this situation, maybe not for all the ministers because I believe two or two of them are already pensioners, but some of them. Um, did you consider this? You, we did not consider it. It's part of the legislation that is there and um, there's nothing you can do about it. It's part of legislation that was created that um, if someone resigns as minister, they have right to X amount of salary. I don't know the ex exact details, but that's just something that um, will affect the budget. I don't believe it's going to affect the budget that drastically in comparison, for example, with the expenditures of entering into a justice park of $80 million, for example, or some of those larger projects that were slated to be done without adequately studying and seeing the need for these projects. Um, if we take, for example, again, we know that there's a situation with crime on the island. We know we need a juvenile de de detention center. We know the prison need upgrading. upgrading. My question was, could it be done in phases? Um, should we be um, spending money, millions, on a justice park, or should we take that money and plow it into education, into building good school facilities, into afternoon schools, into keeping the children off the road? Should we be more busy with preventive 
prevention. So those are the things that puzzle me. And I have a question before I leave. Um, I would have for Mr. Lumen that he described. Um, I think it's very clear as to your position, why you took your position. But there's one thing I wanted you to clarify for me. Um, you said you knocked on several ministers' doors. You're tired of it. How do you express to these ministers your intention if they don't do what is necessary that you will pull your support? I think I have um, expressed to every single minister, to the members of parliament, both in closed doors and on the floor of parliament. I believe it was colleague um, Arundel who, after I spoke, told the ministers, uh, when I told them, you guys have to perform because I will not be sitting here and allow the people of Samantha not get an opportunity to be able to move on with their lives and to live better. And so we have had many um, meetings behind closed doors as a coalition. I have expressed myself to them and my concern in a passionate manner in understanding and for them to realize the prioritization that needs to happen for the people of St. Martin. That we have just a few um, years left, an opportunity that was given and instead of sitting down and thinking about all these huge big projects and projects and projects and projects and projects and projects, we need to start looking for the social issues, deal with the social issues, and to be able that the people of Samaritan can say, you know what, I didn't understand, I was upset, but at least I can feel a sense of relief that my cost of living has gone down that my situation is a little bit better and that I can relax and know that my children have a future ahead. Um, like I said before, I have always been consistent, whether it's on my party that I support, when I didn't like certain things that they do, I have made it known. And so I cannot know because of a shift and moving with another party that all of a sudden my consistency and my message to be able to help the needs of the, 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 the struggling people in St. Martin to be silent because I am not there anymore. And so I think my message is clear. I'm hoping that the people of St. Martin can sit back and sit down and ask themselves a question. What it is do, do we want for ourselves? We complain every single day to politicians that they need to do this, they need to do that. What it is do we want for ourselves? What it is we want for our children. And so instead of, 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 of everybody looking to throw the blame at me and saying, uh, you're here on the radio program, oh, he's, a, he's a, a jumping jack, he's this, he's that. I think the message should be, here is this young man that is fighting for my cause, regardless of who party he is on, regardless of who coalition he is on, but in the position that he is in as a minister, he has been the one fighting. So if it costs, if we have to continue to move around and move around and move around until we get it right, that is the sacrifice we have to do. And that's political maturity that this 33 year old in, um, young man understands. I have, I believe I could say, I have gained 40 years of experience within four years term um, of everything that has transpired. Um, but it is only because I love the people of St. Martin and I am willing to sacrifice even though they may not know what they think that is in the best interest for them, because a lot of us don't know. But I am doing it because there is a vision that has to be fulfilled, that our people cannot continue to be in the situation that they're in. And they have to sit back and we have to be mature enough to look with among us and see <coughs> who are the ones that are fighting to make sure that their life are better. It may not be the person you voted for, it may not be the party that you may like, but we have to ask ourselves as a people, where are we going and how can we stand behind individuals that is fighting for their own survival? And so when you, when you listen to certain conversations, you say to yourself, wait a minute, 
Why are people saying all these things about me? I am fighting for you. I am fighting for your cause. And so I have to, I sit home sometimes and I ask myself, Romaine, why are you fighting for individuals that are not, don't want you to fight for them? Why are you harassing yourself, stressing out yourself? I'm mentally tired, physically tired. I've aged 10, 12 years within a two and a half, almost three years period um, in politics and fighting for certain people who don't want you to fight for them because of what you hear on the radios and on the television and so forth. And so we have to be mature. We have to understand that um, situations will happen we have to look amongst members and say, you know what? Let me throw my support on this young lady. Let me throw my support on this young man. Because I see they have a good heart. I may not like who they are affiliated with. I have, is me and MP Jules James, it's no secret. We have unresolved issues that I hope that one day can be resolved. But is the issue between me and Jules bigger than the needs of the people? We have to ask ourselves the question. I have still unresolved issues with, with certain members of my former party, leaders of my former party, that I hope one day we can come together and resolve. But is my issue with them bigger than the needs of the people? And so are we comfortable to know that, oh, certain people are out of government, but how did that improve your life? How did it help you know to when you go to the grocery store that you don't have to walk with a shopping cart, that you can actually stroll with a shopping cart? How did it help your situation that your young, your 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 son or daughter that you sacrificed to send to college, that they could come back and actually get a job and a career in the area of their studies? And so we must be mature as people. And so sometimes I am not worried about the those that um say all the things they say about me, those that understand me and understand my vision and my heart, those are the persons that keep me up at night to work for the people. And those that disagree and wish all ills on me, they will also benefit too as well. This is a diagram in the country in which we live. Um, I would like to um, the portfolio of economic affairs and tourism and transportation. Why did I um, decide to look towards that ministry? Um, I have an economic background. I have my bachelor's in economics. I am the only one I believe up until now, maybe it has changed, within the Netherlands and Tilly's to have the highest maritime degree from the World Maritime University in Sweden. I have been around the tourism field my whole, could say my whole life. Um, and so there is a need out there within that ministry to be able that we now can bring confidence back in our consumers. We have to start to put together stimulus packages for our economy that we can now sit down with business people and give them certain incentives for even hiring our own local persons, our own local people in St. Martin. We have to say to ourselves that we can give foreign investors 10 years tax breaks to set up shop in St. Martin. We can do the same for our young people between the ages of 18 years and 30 years who want to become entrepreneurs. Maybe not a 10 year tax break, maybe a three, maybe a four, maybe a five. So we can now say, we can now move St. Martin into um, an economical um, um, uh, position that we can be proud of. So there's a lot of things we need to start doing in St. Martin. We need to start looking at customer service in this country. We just need to start looking at the ability to be able to make sure that opportunities are given to young persons who went away to study, who came back with an engineer degree but working in Burger King, persons who came back with a law degree but find a job in a tourism department. We need to start structuring things better 
We need to regain the confidence of businesses in St. Martin to work along with government so that we don't continue having the, the feeling of the trend that government is the enemy of businesses and we must work together cohesively to be able to bring back this economy the way that it can go, the way that I believe that it can be because of how decisions will be made, how choices will happen, but at the end of the day, we have to make sure that we do the best that we can do to bring back confidence in this country and to our people. My next question to Father Mark, that uh, the next couple of months or next year, it will be election time again. Would you be with the United or as an, as an independent? Um, at this present time, um, I don't know what the future holds for me, but I know who holds those futures for me. Um, being in politics for the time that I've been has been a constant strain on my family. And when I talk about this, people make light of it. Um, there is, my mother has gone through um, a procedure last year, um, a, health, a health procedure um, that she is getting over with, and it's difficult for her. It is difficult for my father um, and my parents to see the things that their son, their only son, their only child is going through um, on St. Martin for the benefit of the people of St. Martin. And so um, I am not worried about elections next year. I am worried about what we can do right now to be able to help the people of this country right now. And what happens after that, happens after that. Question is 